On January 5th, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered his armed forces to observe a unilateral 36-hour ceasefire in Ukraine this weekend for the Orthodox Christmas holiday, the first such broad truce maneuver in the almost 11-month-old battle. But is there any truth in this truce, or is it just a political play? Russian President Vladimir Putin declared a 36-hour ceasefire, which was supposed to last from noon Friday until the end of Saturday. Putin's directive came after the Russian Orthodox Church's leader, Patriarch Kirill of Moscow, requested a ceasefire between January 6th and 7th, when many Orthodox Christians celebrate Christmas. However, Ukrainian officials expressed doubt about the interim ceasefire, claiming that Moscow only wanted a break to gather reserves, equipment, and ammunition. On Thursday, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky stated that Russia intends to use Orthodox Christmas as a cover to restock and stop Ukrainian advances in the eastern Donbass region. What will this accomplish? Only another increase in the casualty count, he added. Serhii Haidai, head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, told Ukrainian television, regarding this truce, they just want to get some kind of pause for a day or two to pull even more reserves, bring some more ammo. Russia cannot be trusted. Not a single word they say, Haidai added. Now in its 11th month, the battle that many experts thought would be over within a few days or weeks has become a grueling war. Both sides have suffered setbacks in recent weeks. Ukraine's economy shrank by more than 30% last year as Russian missile attacks destroyed civilian infrastructure, leaving many without heat in the dead of winter. Meanwhile, Ukrainian raids on Russian barracks have resulted in the deaths of a substantial number of Russian soldiers and stirred debate within Russia. Ukrainian presidential advisor Mikhailo Podolyak responded to Putin's move on Twitter, stating that before any temporary truce, Russia must vacate occupied territories in Ukraine. First, Ukraine doesn't attack foreign territory and doesn't kill civilians, as RF does. Second, RF must leave the occupied territories. Only then will it have a temporary truce. Keep hypocrisy to yourself, Podolyak said. The plan for a temporary truce has raised eyebrows in the international community. U.S. President Joe Biden expressed doubt on Thursday, telling reporters that he was reluctant to respond to anything Putin says. I found it interesting. He was ready to bomb hospitals, nurseries, and churches on the 25th and New Year's. I mean, I think he's trying to find some oxygen, he continued. It was cynical according to U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price and the U.S. had little faith in the intentions behind Russia's proposed truce. On Thursday, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock cautioned that the promise of a ceasefire would provide neither freedom nor security to those living under Moscow's harsh conflict. If Putin wanted peace, he would take his soldiers home, and the war would be over. But apparently he wants to continue the war after a short break, she said in a tweet. Putin's order comes after a meeting with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who has tried to position himself as a middleman between Putin and the West. During the meeting, Putin stated that he was open to serious dialogue about Ukraine, but that Kyiv must accept new territorial realities, according to a Kremlin statement. The full statement from the Kremlin on Thursday read, Taking into account the appeal of His Holiness, Patriarch Kirill, I instruct the Minister of Defense of the Russian Federation to introduce from 1200 hours January 6, 2023 until 2400 hours January 7, 2023, a ceasefire along the entire line of contact between the parties in Ukraine. Based on the fact that a large number of citizens professing orthodoxy live in the combat areas, we call on the Ukrainian side to declare a ceasefire and give them the opportunity to attend services on Christmas Eve as well as on the Day of the Nativity of Christ. Kirill has been an outspoken supporter of Russians' involvement in Ukraine, preaching in September that military duty washes away all sins. The Russian Orthodox Church's leader has also been at odds with Pope Francis, who has called Russia's invasion of Ukraine expansionism and imperialism. In May, Pope warned Patriarch Kirill not to become Putin's altar boy. An Orthodox Church in Ukraine stated in November that it would permit its churches to observe Christmas on December 25th rather than January 7th, as is customary in Orthodox congregations. The declaration by Ukraine's Orthodox Church, headquartered in Kyiv, 
deepened the separation between the Russian Orthodox Church and other Orthodox believers. In recent years, a significant portion of Ukraine's Orthodox community has drifted away from Moscow, a trend accelerated by the conflict Russia sparked in eastern Ukraine beginning in 2014. Zelensky recommended beginning the path to peace with a Russian army withdrawal before December 25th, but Moscow rejected his proposal. The ceasefire order, according to political animist Tatyana Sanovaya, fits well into Putin's logic, in which Russia is acting on the right side of history and fighting for justice. In this war, Putin feels like a good guy, doing good not only for himself and the brotherly nations, but also for the world he's freeing from the hegemony of the United States. Stanovaya, founder of the independent Our Politik think tank, wrote on Telegram. She's also linked Putin's move to the recent attack on Makivka by Ukrainian forces, which killed at least 89 Russian servicemen. He really doesn't want anything like that for Christmas, she explained. On March 8th, Women's Day, Ukraine's Independence Day, December 25th, and the New Year, there were no ceasefires, so why should one be now? Sofia Romanovska, a 21-year-old student from Mariupol who escaped to Kyiv, peppered her comments with expletives. According to the Turkish president's office, Putin gave the truce orders after Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan requested him to implement a unilateral ceasefire in a phone call. According to the Kremlin, Putin reaffirmed Russia's openness to a serious dialogue with Ukrainian authorities. Erdogan later assured Zelensky that Turkey was willing to mediate a lasting peace. Erdogan has regularly made such promises, aided in securing an agreement allowing Ukraine to export grain and enabled prisoner swaps. Russia's stated willingness to engage in peace talks came with the usual caveats. Kiev authorities fulfill the well-known and repeatedly stated demands and recognize new territorial realities, the Kremlin said, referring to Moscow's demand that Ukraine recognizes Crimea and other illegally seized territory as part of Russia. Previous peace talks have failed due to Moscow's territorial demands, since Ukraine insists on Russia withdrawing from occupied territory. Germany announced last month that it would match the United States' pledge to equip Ukraine with a Patriot missile battery, the most advanced surface-to-air missile system the West has provided to Kyiv. Germany has also stated that it will supply Martyr armored personnel carriers, while France has stated that it will discuss with Ukraine the delivery of armored combat vehicles capable of destroying tanks. U.S. officials announced that they would send roughly $3 billion in military aid to Ukraine in a new package that will include several dozen Bradley fighting vehicles for the first time. The goal is to provide as much assistance to Ukrainian forces as possible before spring arrives and fighting intensifies. According to the Kremlin, the West's supply of arms to Ukraine is extending the conflict. While more weaponry arrives, the battlefield appears to be in a state of stalemate and attrition. As winter approaches, troop and equipment movement becomes more limited. According to Krylo Tymoshenko, deputy head of Ukraine's presidential office, Russian shelling killed at least five people and injured eight in the preceding 24 hours in the latest battle. And according to Don's governor, Pavlo Kyrilenko, a violent fight has left 60% of the eastern city of Bakhmut in ruins. Ukrainian troops appear to be slowing down the Russians, Taking the city in the Donbass region, a vast industrial sector bordering Russia, would not only provide Putin with a significant battlefield victory after months of failures, but would also disrupt Ukraine's supply lines and allow Moscow's forces to move on vital Ukrainian strongholds in Donetsk. The first convicts recruited for battle by the Wagner Group, a Russian private military contractor, earned a guaranteed government pardon after spending six months on the front line in what appeared to be an attempt to lure other individuals to join the fight. Ukrainians who have been in combat for nearly a year were skeptical of Putin's claim. Pavlo Skotarenko, from Kershaw's southern region, does not anticipate much to change. Every day they shell us, and people die in Kershaw, and this interim measure will have no effect, he continued. A Ukrainian soldier on the front lines in Ukraine's eastern Luhansk region said that the temporary truce announcement appeared to be an attempt to improve Russia's image. I do not think that this is done for some military tactical purpose. One day will not solve much, the Ukrainian soldier, who goes by the callsign Archer, told CNN by phone. 
Perhaps this is done to make the image of the whole of Russia a little more human because so many atrocities are constantly emerging, and this could earn them a few points of support from the people, the soldier said.